Hello and welcome, dear brothers and sisters. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Welcome to our series, The Joyful Truth. Our subject this period is Holiness is Possible. Today we shall reflect on the holy moment. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day and for all your blessings. Help us to remain always grateful for all you do for us and in us. Watch over in a special way today anyone who is hungry, lonely, depressed, addicted, unemployed, or just in need of the human touch. And inspire us to realize that we are your partners in this work you wish to do in the world. Help us, Lord, to remain ever mindful of the great love you have for each and every one of us. And give us the courage to respond with the bold enthusiasm of a little child. Amen. Your available greatness. Well, when we play football, we know the goal is to score as many points as possible. In business, the goal is to produce high quality goods and services and produce a profit. So the goal of golf is to finish with the lowest score. We approach almost everything we do with a goal or a desired outcome in mind. So what is the goal of the Christian life? It's amazing how many people have no clue, no idea. Henry David Thoreau wrote, in the long run, men hit only what they aim at. Therefore, they had better aim at something high. What are we aiming at? What is the goal we are moving toward? Holiness is the goal of the Christian life. I know it's a huge concept. It's a serious stuff. But I always want you to keep three things in mind. Number one, what you think holiness is, and it actually might be, very well two quite different things. Second, you want holiness? You may not realize it yet, but you do. And finally, it may be a big concept and serious stuff, but a little bit of seriousness is highly agreeable to the soul. As I have said to you time and time again throughout these all sessions, you are not too young to start thinking about life's big questions. You are not too young for a little bit of seriousness. In fact, the sooner you embrace some serious, the more fruitful and fulfilling your life will be. So what is holiness? Our culture makes holiness seem boring. Nothing could be further from the truth. The culture pretends that anything religious in us endeavor freedom when in fact, truly, spirituality sets us free. Some people think that if you are to be holy, you can never have any fun. Well, it's another lie. Nobody lived more fully than the saints. The truth is, there is nothing more attractive than holiness. And perhaps the biggest surprise of all is that you want to live a holy life more than you want anything else. You have an enormous desire for happiness. Almost every decision you make is based on your desire. The reality is, the more you grow in holiness, the happier you will be. So happiness and holiness are linked. God wants you to be happy. And also, he wants you to live a holy life. The two cannot be separated. You also have an enormous desire for relationships. But what kind of relationships you do? Do you want relationships that are filled with lying, cheating, and gossip, in which you always have to have your guard up? That stuff is exhausting, trust me, because you can never relax in relationships like those. Life had taught me that in great relationships, we can relax because we know our friends want what is good for us. They are helping us to become the best version of ourselves. And no matter what happens, we know that they have our best interest at heart. Do you want to be in a relationship 
with people who are patient or impatient, humble or prideful, generous or stingy, thoughtful or careless, faithful or unfaithful. Whether you are aware of it or not, you want holiness and you want to be around other people who are striving to live holy lives. The problem is most Christians have never considered holiness as a possibility. Most of us as Christians don't actually believe that holiness is possible. That's the lie. It's the most devastating lie in the history of Christianity. The tragic thing is that it's not a lie that gets told about Christians. It's a lie we tell ourselves. It's delicate, deceptive, and disorienting. We might believe that holiness is possible for someone else, like Mother Teresa or our grandma, but not for us. We know our faults, our failings, weaknesses. We know the horrible thoughts we have at times, and we know that we are capable of because we know the dark things we have done. But I'm here to let you know, on your life-changing secret, we are all called for. Holiness is possible. It's possible for you to live a holy life. This changes everything. It opens up incredible possibilities. It's easy to say, but let me prove to you also. If I said to you, I want you to create one holy moment today, you would probably ask me, what is a holy moment? Well, a holy moment happens when you are being the person God created you to be and doing what he wants you to do right at that moment. Examples of holy moments include being patient with your little brother, your little sister, helping someone in need, being a good friend, welcoming someone who has been rejected by others, and avoiding gossip, etc., etc. So anyone can create a single holy moment. If you really set your mind to it, you could create a holy moment today. And if you can create one holy moment today, you can create two tomorrow for the next day. So once you know how to create a single holy moment, you can duplicate the process. My dear ones, the saints were not born saints, and they weren't perfect. They were men and women like you and me, who realized that the world's vision for them was bankrupt. So they turned to God and his vision for their lives. They created one holy moment at a time, and over the course of their lives, they threaded together thousands of holy moments to create a holy life. We can do that. I can do that. We are called to do that. My dear ones, holiness is possible. And once we come to that realization, everything changes. Possibilities we never considered before us get opened before us. So God bless you all.